What's up dudes? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be working on Jerry the 64 bug. In the last video we got the front beam cut and turned and lifted the car and so all that's back under the car and in today's video we're going to have to change the brake lines because the ones that are on there are all old and rotted out and they're too short anyways so we can't even get all the steering angle out of the car. So we have some extended brake lines that we're going to put on there and we're also going to make some custom uh, one-off tie rods for the car. The old ones were just all rusted out and like the link pin on the end was super wobbly and worn out. So we're gonna replace that with Himes. So it's gonna be a lot stronger for our application. As always, we gotta start the video off with a little monster action. I don't know, man. I have to try the orange today. I think that's gonna be the theory. Mm. Oh, they get some on the screen right here, dude. I'm still waiting on the Himes for the steering, but I do have all the brake lines for the car. So let me kind of run you through that. So here's everything for the brake lines on the front of the car. This one is already completely assembled, but I wanted to leave one all in the bag so you can see all the part numbers and everything. But this is a 24 inch line, stainless line. Uh, the stock is 19, so five inches longer should be enough for our application. And then on the ends here we have fittings. This one is the one that'll go into the drum uh, on the spindle. So this is just a male, uh, male to male. So this is dash three AN and that's what these lines run. And then this is like a M10 by one like I don't know some bubble flare that's what the stock Volkswagen is and then on the other end it's a dash 3 to the female version of that so that's that that'll go on to the hard line side that is on the car and then that goes into the drum brake here's everything in its bag so you can get part numbers right here is the female and that's 65205 and then here's the male 65310 and then here's the 24 inch brake line uh, 310024 and this is all from CarTech. As always, we have the coupon code WINGSWORLD. Mention Tyler Davenport at checkout. Um, but that's where we got all this stuff, and that's what'll be going on the car. Here's basically what the car looks like after our last video. Everything all lifted, all level, so it's looking good. Up front, you can see, still got the tank out. None of this has gone back in for obvious reasons. Uh, but here's the brake line that we're gonna be replacing. So this is the female side, a little run down, and then that's the male side going into the drum down there. So that's what those brake lines are for. And then the steering will come off of this pitman arm right here and go to the two spots on each spindle. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to custom make tie rods for, but that'll be later. And then in here, I also, I really should have done this when I had the beam out, but I do want to paint all this black just so it cleans things up and looks a lot better. So I'll prep that and paint it later once this tire's off as well. So that's actually going to be the first step is getting this thing back on jack stands. And then I can start disassembling the brake system and getting the new lines on there. I hope you guys enjoyed that little montage. It's actually been a few days since I filmed any clips because I have been waiting for parts, but they're finally here. So I can get the front of the car all back together. So I thought I'd go over every single part with you really quick, just so we're all on the same page. So starting off, we have some rough stuff himes. These are three quarter inch heim with a misalignment to accept half inch bolt. Um, these are the stainless uh, misalignments too. You can get them in stainless or zinc, but I went a little bit nicer and got the stainless ones. These Himes aren't the greatest. Uh, there's a few different types of Himes you can get, which I'll link a pretty good video down in my description so you guys can check that out if you want to learn about them. But these are definitely a little bit lower on the quality spectrum. So those are going to work for our application fine, but you can get some better Himes. Over here, got some paint to be able to paint the tie rods and because I'm painting the gas tank right now, so we need that. Now right here, the rest of the Himes and misalignments. And then bam, here's our tubing for the tie rod. This is inch and a quarter 120 roll. Uh, so I'll show you guys what that means if you don't know. So right there should be right at 120. And that's your wall thickness, which is basically eighth inch. So a one and a quarter 120 wall tube basically has a one inch inner diameter. So this should fit perfectly in there, which it does. Um, so that's all gonna work pretty well. 
I'm going to need to cut these to length. I did measure the old tie rods just to get a base from. And here's what we have. So stock eye to eye measurement. Uh, the longer one's going to be 30 and 3 quarter inch and the shorter one's right at 14 inches. Um, that, that may be a little bit different on your car depending on how your alignment is, but mine is perfect. So I'm going to base everything off this and then to adjust it out, you can obviously turn the himes. So that's what I'm going to try and get everything set up to and then we can start adjusting the tie rods from there. So to do that, I have the eye to eye measurement, but that's not how long I'm going to cut the tube because you have the heim, um, the jam nut and the bunk. So the tube sits right here, so we have to subtract the distance. So we'll center that up. We'll subtract the distance from this eye to right here and then double that um, and then subtract that from this number. And that's how long we're gonna have to cut our tube. So that's the first thing we're gonna have to do is get that measured out and cut out and then we can tack everything together. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set it because I should just have to go out because the tie rods are gonna be longer if anything. But I'm gonna leave two threads right here showing in case the tie rod needs to go a little bit shorter. So you don't want to go all the way in because if you need to make the tie rod shorter, you can't do that. So just leave a little bit of thread showing just so you're able to get everything. And also important to mention, the himes that I got, one is, or I got, I got four himes, two of them are left hand thread and two of them are right hand thread. If you got all the same thread directions, you're not going to be able to just spin the tie rod to adjust your alignment. What you'd actually have to do is unbolt it from the spindle or the box and uh, pull the bolt out and spin the heim and you don't want to do that that's going to take way too much time so getting two opposite pitch himes will help you because you can just loosen the jam nut and spin the tie rod that's going to move your spindle in or out depending on which way you go so that definitely makes things easier thought i'd give you guys that tip if you didn't know about that but so here's a heim that's all set where it needs to be it has a couple threads showing right here and i measured from the center of the eyelet down to where it, the bunk's gonna be sitting up against the tube, and that's right at two and a half inches. So that makes things really easy. The reason we have to double this distance is because we're gonna have two of these on the tie rod. So that's gonna, the distance from here to the other one's gonna be how long we have to cut this tube. So eyelet to eyelet, 30 and three quarter, minus two um, of that distance, which is just gonna be five. So we're gonna have to cut a tube that's 25 and three quarter inches, and one that's nine inches. So I'm gonna mark that up on this tube and cut it out and then we can slide these in there, tack them up and mock it up on the car and see if it all works. Hell yeah, brother. You filming? I got you, brother. You're filming? Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna mess up since we're filming. Nice monster hat, dude. Dude, oh, I can't be getting this thing dirty. All right, let's cut this thing. That's how we usually deburr the outside of the tube, and then I'll show you how you do the inside. So, we have this little deburr tool. What's this called, Christian? A deburr tool? That's literally what it's called. <laughs> okay. Well, that's easy. So, you see all this in here? Um, you can hold the tube. No, I don't get it. There. So, then finish off like that, and you have a perfectly prepped inside of the tube and perfectly prepped outside. Um, so I'll do it on this one, but just not sure if we go any further, should be right at nine inches. So nine inches on the money, um, and the other one's cut perfectly as well. So from here, we're gonna have to prep the tube. You want to prep it before you even tack it because you're gonna finish weld it after that. So we usually use some Scotch Bright, or you can use some really high grit, um, really fine sandpaper. We used to use just a grinder and grind back and forth to make it shiny, but you'll get little, it'll flatten it out in certain spots and when you paint it, you'll see that. So this it'll is a much better, in it. yeah, this is a much better solution and it'll get it pretty shiny and ready to weld. And just to add to that, depending on the type of material material you're using, if it's chromoly, it does have some type of mill scale on it. So you might need to use sandpaper first and then go back with some uh, Scotch-Brite. So we got both tie rods just mocked up and ready to tack. This is the finish you get once you use the scotch Bright, So it just makes it really shiny and acceptable to welding. And then I went through off camera and drilled this out with a quarter inch drill bit. And this is what you would call a rosette weld. So that's just adding some more strength and not allowing that bung to pull out of these tie rods. So that's just another element of strength. And the way I measured in on that is half the bung length. So the bung was one inch long. So I marked at half inch and marked it, drilled it out. And then that's how that is now. 
and everything's ready to weld. I wanted to show you just real quick. I'm gonna keep one inch on the end out here. So this should be 15 inches eye to eye. Bam, perfect. And then out here, this one was 30 and three quarters. So 31 and three quarters since I'm just starting at the one inch mark. And bam, you can see it lines up perfect. So these tie rods are exactly where we need them to be. Everything came out really smooth. Um, we have some threads showing so we can go in or out. Everything's fine. So Christian offered to do some TIG welding so I don't have to MIG these up. So I'm going to pass these off to him and he's going to get them tacked up before they go on the car. Mm, it's an orange kind of day. So I ran into two issues on the car when I was trying to get the tie rods on there. One I knew I'd probably have and another one that I wasn't really expecting. So let's just go over here so I can show you guys real quick. These are the tie rods mocked up in here. And the issue that I'm having that I knew that I might have is it's hitting right here on the body. Um, and you can see I heated it up and dented it with just a five pound sledge. And that got us a little bit more clearance, but it's still a lot of rubbing. Um, so we're gonna have to clear that out. I'm gonna end up cutting this. So I'll mark it and cut it out. And then I'm gonna have to plate that back in because I feel like this is pretty critical because this is a unibody, there's no frame. And the beam attaches here and to this part that comes up and connects the rest of the body. So this area is pretty critical. So that's definitely gonna have to get patched back in and retain some strength. The other issue I'm having that I wasn't really expecting is that the holes for the old steering are in a wedge shape. And I knew I'd have to drill them out, but the issue I'm having is they're really hard to drill out. The metal's super hard. So with the half inch drill bit, I barely dented it and I spent a little bit of time on that. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get those drilled that's what I'm more worried about. This isn't too bad because it's just cutting and rewelding a plate back in. But I'm going to start with this today. I do have the gas tank all painted, which I was talking about at the start of this video. And it is looking brand new. I'm really happy with that as it turned out. Took some scotch right to the cap right here and that cleaned things up a lot too. And um, then just masked that off. I haven't done anything to that, but it looks like a brand new tank. So I'm pumped on that. But the hurdle for today is going to be getting the steering all situated. I'm going to jack the car up and put jacks under back here because it's under the beam right now. And when I cut that section, I don't know if it's going to want to push back or what. So I'm just going to put jacks under the body here just to be safe. But I'm going to do that all off camera, uh, just get things done. And then I'll show you the progress on that once I get the piece cut out and just tacked back in so you can see what I had to do. So I got everything handled and got a piece in there and welded in. And I had to take out more material than I thought I would originally have to. So you can see we have a nice C channel in here. Uh, here's the template that I used. The way I went about doing this is I just cut it out until the tie rod cleared. So I would cut it out, test the tie rod, and then once everything cleared, um, I made this template and then cut it out in metal and bent it in the vise. So Christian did this section right here, which looks way better than anything else. Uh, but the backside's my strong suit. I don't know why I did so much better back there, but I'm happy with this. Now I'm gonna have to get it painted and then this will be done and then we have to deal with getting the holes drilled. Christian's going to be doing me a big favor over here and welding the tie rods up. Uh, he's going to take them so that'll all be done and then those will be able to get painted. But that's kind of where we're at. My goal by the end of the end of today is to get that welded up and to get everything painted, tie rods and this, I was going to call it the engine bay, but this little trunk area, get that all painted up as well. And then so tomorrow we'll have to drill the holes and then just hopefully reassemble, set the alignment. Uh, get the gas tank back in there and then it's go time. Before I went ahead and painted these, I just wanted to show them off real quick because it's probably the nicest thing that's going on in this car. So Christian did a super good job welding these. I'm super happy with them. If I had done them, they would have been hammered and they would have been big, they wouldn't have been TIG. So thank you Christian again for doing that. Those look freaking rad. Uh, time to get them painted though. So I keep being super optimistic and think I'm gonna get the car done the next day, but here we are two days later. Here's the progress that I've been getting on this thing. I got everything painted, drilled the holes. The holes I had to heat up with a torch until they were hot enough, and then just used some WD-40 and a half inch drill bit and drilled it out. And it took probably like five minutes each hole. It was pretty difficult, this is some thick stuff. So drilling it out was pretty hard, but now that's all handled. This is in here, the tie rods are painted. And then what I've been doing today is getting this piece made. So this is just kind of a connecting plate to connect the bolts. So over time, since this is single shear, there's a chance of the hole getting ovaled out because this will slide around in there. So I did this just to keep everything in line and keep it all together. And it's a pretty tight clearance right here, but there is a gap. These himes barely fit in here. 
The way to go might be going just a size smaller heim. This is a three quarter heim. Go in a size smaller because you can run a smaller tube as well, uh, potentially, and then you wouldn't necessarily have to clear this out as much. So I'm kind of pushing it, but these are going to be super strong on the car. You can see there is, so this is turning, it starts to hit right there, but look how much angles on this. Like the car will never see this much angle because the tire the tire rubs on here before it would ever get this far. So I'm not worried about that. And then going the other way, you can see it's it's rubbing the bolt right there. But again, look at how much angles on this tire. Like it, it's, it's gonna rub before it ever gets to that point. So I'm not too stressed out about that. Um, it should never even get that far. The tires will rub before that. One thing that I did mess up on is when I was bending this brake line, because I did bend it around to match this plate, and just uses this little tab right here to hold it on. I messed up the seal that goes in here. It was old anyways and it was leaking a little bit, but when I bent things, it ripped it even more and it started leaking really bad. So I gotta get a new one of those. That's honestly the biggest factor in getting the car back together right now because it's Labor Day and I can't go get one. So I just wanted to talk about shanking bolts real quick. So this is what it would start as, and then this is after. So you cut down this so you don't have a bunch of threads showing. Uh, because then you just have to thread over more threads and this is the shankier bolt so you don't want any threads where there doesn't need to be so this is for the outer spindle and this will sit down so between this and the heim you don't want any threads in there so this is a properly shanked bolt and this is basically what you want this is perfect um, no threads in where the hole is going to be and there's not a bunch of threads sticking out of the end the way i did this is i put everything together marked it three threads past where the nut is, cut it with a cutoff wheel straight on, and then used a sanding disc just to get all the burrs off. And when you do it, you wanna have a nut on here before you cut it. That way, once you cut it, you can back the nut off and make sure everything runs smoothly. So like this, a nut goes on it fine, there's no issues, and everything goes together smoothly still. We're getting down to the final things on the bug. I got the tie rods in and completely tightened down. What I did is ran a Stover nut on there with red Loctite, and then over the top ran this. It's called Viz Torque. There's a bunch of brands that have these. It's basically a thread checker. So if a bolt backs off, you put this over the nut in the bolt, and if it starts to back off, you'll see it. So with this, you'll know when stuff comes loose, if it comes loose. So it's good to put that on bolts that are critical, such as tie rod bolts. So that's on all of those, so I'll know. Christian and I set the alignment. We basically did that by moving the car backwards and forwards a bunch of times in the backyard till everything looked right. And the, tr and the car was tracking pretty straight. So once we get on the road, we'll see if it's close or not, but we think it's pretty much there. And then the gas tank, put that in today. Also got that little master cylinder seal put in. Uh, so no more leaking in the brake system, but that tank looks really good on there. When I went to V parts this morning, uh, I got these as well. So what I've been doing the last little bit is pulling these out, polishing this, uh, cleaning out the inside of the headlight and then putting on these little brows. This one still needs to be done. So look, you're going from that to that. So way cleaner, uh, just cleaning these things helps a ton. So that's what I'm working on right now. And once I finish this side, we're gonna go take this thing for a test drive. Yeah, this thing definitely sits taller. Um, first test drive, the steering definitely feels tighter. Um, yeah, the alignment's off for sure. <laughs> I can already tell, but. No, no real rubbing. Right there, a car's tracking straight. So it's off just a little bit. It's definitely got more body roll without the sway bar and shocks up front. I need to get a shock up front for sure. Uh, but everything seems to be driving normal besides the alignment. Just to double check. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to see if it rubs at a point a little bit faster. Because that felt really good besides the sponginess.
<laughs> with the shock though, do you think it would? Because it wouldn't compress as fast. No, I don't think it like would. Like it compressed fast with no shock. But still, we're doing 35 over that, just that little bit of rub is pumped on that. Oh, <laughs> backfired. Well, the car is driving. Uh, I'm pretty pumped on that, but you could see once we hit it at a little bit faster, we were doing about 35. The second time I hit that dip, it did rub very slightly. And that, it's I'm for sure thinking that it's from not running a front shock, because look, if you were watching my story the other day, that's just with one hand putting my weight on it. So this thing is spongy as heck. So I definitely need to get a shock that'll solve that issue, and I don't think we'll have any rubbing issues if we hit that again at 35. Uh, so that is what I need to do on this thing next. I do need to do the alignment too. I don't know if I'm going to try and do it myself. I might. Um, just try and get things a little bit better. And then if it's still wrong, then I'll just take it to an alignment shop and see if they'll do it. Usually once you go to some custom steering, they might not want to touch it. So we'll see since this is basically stock geometry and everything. So we'll see if they can mess with it. This is the first time I've driven this car in about a month. So I was itching to go take it out. So there it's done everything's working properly i just have to get the alignment done no rubbing which is the main thing i was concerned about with the rear at least because when i didn't have spacers on that it would rub on the arm a little bit so no rubbing back there just slight rub up front but that's an easy fix just a shock so that's gonna wrap it up for this video i hope you guys enjoyed this little series on getting the bug lifted uh, if you did please leave a like comment and subscribe down below and we'll see you in the next one mm.